words because they don't have the capacity for voice and they're receiving it. There are some that can not call because they don't have the system to do that. But I send them a voice message and they're receiving the Holy Ghost. There are many of them that have not sent their testimonies yet and they might not. But I got to hear them speak in other tongues. When I was in Russia yesterday, I was in Russia about four times. He miscounted them because we kept getting disconnected. And he's a young man there. God not only filled him with the Holy Ghost, but he healed him. If you have Facebook and you can access the testimonies, he healed his body of something incurable. Did you see that testimony? Yes. And so he, he testified of that, and um, he called me back, and I, he said he wants to speak in tongues. And I said, well, I heard you speaking in tongues when we prayed before. And he said, no, I was speaking Russian in my native language. And so I said, no, when I talk to you again, you're not going to speak anything but English, and then don't confuse the prophet. You're not going to speak in Russian. Because I thought you were speaking in tongues. So when you speak only in English, then I will know when you start speaking in other tongues. And it better not come out Russian. Just a Russian mighty man. And so he began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave him utterance. And God is moving. I've been invited around the world to come there. I'm not going yet. I'm not going yet. But um, I would love to go. I would love to go to Pakistan. When I was at home and dancing around the globe, I began to pray for Pakistan. I said, what's up with this, Lord? What am I praying for Pakistan for? But I kept, I said, well, it's you, so I'll just keep on and doing it. So I prayed for Pakistan. And I didn't know, because I don't watch television, folks. I don't keep up with the news. I care about the good news. If God wants me to know something, he'll tell me. And I didn't know about the attack in Pakistan that happened on Easter Sunday. Because right after that, I didn't know anything about it. Everybody else did. They watched the news. I don't need it. God will tell me what I need to do. So I began to pray for Pakistan. Went with it. And then, uh, two days later, I believe it was, Somebody messaged me the day after and said, I need prayer. And I said, where are you from? And he said, Pakistan. And I said, give me a call. Give me a call. So he called me. Holy Spirit came on him. And then I prophesied over him that when he started praying for people in his church in Pakistan, meaning they don't understand being slain in the spirit, I said, they're going to fall when you pray for them. How many got to see that video of Pakistan when three weeks later, then he touched somebody and they fell. And he said, Pastor, I need contact with you every day. And I said, I can't do that. You know, I can't give you every day, but I may, I'll give you what I can. So I called him this morning in, uh, before his service that he had and uh, prayed with him. And then I asked her, it was last night, and I asked him, uh, their time was different, it was his early morning. He says, how much time have we got before your service? And he says, a half an hour. And I says, a half an hour is good. And a half an hour is good, that's great. We'll just do this for a half an hour. And then I just prayed for him, and the Spirit of God came upon him in the fire, and he was just all wrapped and ready to go. And then I messaged him this morning to say, how was your service in Pakistan? And he said, oh, the glory of God was there. Oh, it was great, you know. God really moved in our midst. This is Pentecost. How many felt Pentecost today a little bit of God? A little more than what you had before? Because you didn't want to come here and go home with less than what you came with. Did you want to have less than? I don't want to have less than. I want to have more than I have. I don't ever 
only use God. Have you ever been used God? Because people took it from you, right? Then you didn't have anything for yourself, did you? And you didn't have anything for someone else, did you? Because they took it. You got any takers in your life? But they'll just take everything you got, everything you give, and the things that you don't want to give because you did want a little bit left over for yourself, but they will take that too. Anybody know that's true? So what we do is the river of his glory. He said, I will give you grace and glory. It is a river of life, a river of his glory. And he tells you that you can be fat and full of the blessings of the Lord. Isn't it great that it costs you nothing? It costs you nothing. If you are empty, you're in a good position to be filled with the glory of God, but it takes a little effort to say, yes, Lord, I will receive. I'm not too proud. I'm not too stubborn. I'm going to receive the free gift of your spirit and your power and your glory and your energy. Yes. He says to come into his presence where there's fullness of joy. So when you find out that you have no joy, then that means no presence. Hello? If you have no joy, then you are not in the presence of God. And then you can say, well, he's everywhere. Certainly, he's everywhere. He's in the cemetery, too. They ain't moving. They're not receiving a thing. It's not benefiting them. True? Not when the rapture takes place, but you know what? When we're dead, we don't need to stay dead, right? We can be the walking dead, the moving dead. Doing dead works that are unproductive. What are dead works? They don't accomplish anything. It's because we're dead. We don't have any life in us. And if you don't have any life in us, then we ain't got any life to give anybody, right? Well, he's everywhere. Yes, he is. But he tells us to come into his presence. And there's fullness of joy there. At his right hand is pleasure forevermore. And if you are not feeling any pleasure, you're not in his presence. His presence can be all around, but you've got to get into it. And the sad part about it is when people get a touch from God, that's all they want. Gimme, gimme, touch me, touch me. Just touch me again, Lord. Just touch me again. How about being filled with the Holy Spirit so that you can touch someone else with the power of God? And it's not until that overflows. He said, there's a well of life in you, springs of living water. And then he told, Apostle Paul told Timothy to stir up the gifts. I, defer, I don't know about you, but I've been in Pentecost since I was a little kid. God's saying, come and stir me, Lord. How many of you have heard that before? Stir us, Lord. Stir yourself. <laughs> Where in the Bible has it ever, have you ever heard of him stirring you? Well, I know that he's capable, you know, he's Got a great big hand, he can slap us around, silly if he wants to. Got a bunch of angels, they like to play with me. One pushes me this way, one pushes me that way, then sideways, and they're having fun, and I'm saying, come on. Pick on some of you, I'm afraid to say that, you know. I don't want to tell the angels off, you know. Pick on some of your own size, because they're bigger than I am. And you know what, 
I want them on my side. If they want to play, as long as they don't hurt me, they will. If they're having fun, you know, okay, all right, all right, make a spectacle out of me. Go ahead, bet me if you want to. Do whatever you want to do with me, as long as I've got God. Then he said, just stir up the gifts that are in you. If it was good enough for Timothy under the ministry of the Apostle Paul, and it's written, don't you think it's there for a purpose that we need to stir ourselves, not wait for somebody with a teaspoon to stir us? Because I don't know about you, but I don't want a teaspoon mentality. If you've got the water coming out of the faucet and you put the teaspoon underneath it, it's going to make a lot of magic. But at the end of that game, it has nothing at all in the teaspoon. You want that? You don't need to be stirred with a teaspoon. You don't need a ladle. You don't need a baseball bat inside of you stirring you up. You just need to stir yourself up. The gifts of God are without repentance. So we don't need it again. We need to stir it up. We can have more fillings. Yes, we can. Because we get used up. You go out in the door today. Let me tell you who's outside the door. Do you know who's outside the door waiting for you to get out of here? Mm -hmm. Bam! So you better have some bam in you. You better have some bam in you. Another thing that's pretty good, we'll borrow this word, a little pam doesn't hurt either. Non-stick. It ain't sticking to me. You just take that somewhere else. I ain't gonna have that. It's just gonna fall right off of me. I'm not up for grabs. I'm not play toys. Satan, the angels can mess with me all they want to, but I don't need a devil. I don't need demons. I don't need darkness. And I don't need to be the play toy. So get some bad in you. Get some Pam on you. That's the Holy Spirit. That's the grease yourself up with the oil of the Holy Spirit and everything will fall off you. Is that all right? <laughs>